Spec Ops, The Line. When people hear that name, they typically associate it with controversy. But unlike most videos made on this game, we're not here to solely talk about that. There's so much more to this game than the controversy surrounding it. Disguised as a generic yet brutal third-person cover shooter, it has a strong message about PTSD and its effects on those in combat. This is a game that you should definitely experience for yourself. Unfortunately, it was delisted off of digital storefronts due to expiring licenses. Long live physical media, eh? I'm not going deep into the story in this video. I'll discuss plot points as I deem necessary, but I'm going to try and keep it as spoiler free as possible. That being said, I am crutching on Wikipedia for plot points. Sorry. I've only played the game once. I'm not as knowledgeable about it as I am with like Metal Gear. I really didn't feel like re-watching the entire 5 hour gameplay anyway. Yeah, I beat it in one sitting. I'm just super cool like that. Alright, time to set the scene. The city of Dubai was hit with a massive sandstorm. A US Army battalion, the damned 33rd, volunteer for relief efforts. The storm worsens, trapping everyone inside. Riots ensue and the 33rd declare martial law. Things get out of hand and they start slaughtering civilians. The 33rd split, with a group known as the Exiled fighting back against the crazed soldiers. Meanwhile, the CIA send in a squad to poke around. They end up convincing the locals to fight back. Now everyone's fighting everyone, and nobody can tell the good and the bad 33rd apart. The Exiled 33rd attempt an evacuation but never make it. Dubai is declared a no man's land, and the 33rd are branded as traitors. Two weeks later, three army rangers are tasked with reconning the city. You play as Captain Martin Walker. He's a member of Delta Force from the US Army Rangers. Your mission is to confirm the presence of any survivors, then immediately extract, all while being hit by random sandstorms. Now, as it typically is with video games, things don't go to plan. Imagine if the mission went smoothly. The game would be 20 minutes long with minimal combat. 10 out of 10, I love the idea. Now, as I said, the game's a fairly generic third-person cover shooter. The movement feels sort of clunky, with the sprint mechanic getting me in trouble more than once. You can blind fire from cover and give your squad basic commands. Lugo, take him out. Yes, sir. Changing position. Your squad mates are dumb smart. They'll give callouts on what's happening and even take action if things get too hairy but they really love to run in front of your gun when you're shooting. When you shoot at enemies, they don't always immediately die. A lot of them will lay on the ground groveling in pain. You can go to them and perform increasingly brutal executions. I prefer to call it a mercy killing. Get out of the way! Son of a bitch! Oh, this guy's dead. Wait, that's me. Ow. He really hooked that on that quick. Ow. Ultimate wedgie. Shit. Why? <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god! Load in, please. Thank you, textures. Cheese. Nightmare fuel. Like, I think he had a concussion, and that's why it looked like that. Now, as the game goes on, it gets more and more unhinged. You're being shot at from all sides because everyone thinks you're the bad guy. Meanwhile, Walker's strategies become more intense and cruel. About halfway through the game, he eventually snaps. That's when the infamous White Phosphorus mission happens. I'm not going to spoil it. Damn, that section hits hard. I had seen many videos talk about it, but experiencing it for myself, I wasn't ready for that. We need to keep moving. What? It's just downhill from there, too. Walker starts having hallucinations. Welcome to hell, Walker. And pretty much goes on a full-blown rampage. By the end of the game, he's just covered head to toe in blood. There's actually four separate endings based off of two paths you take towards the end. I feel like I got the better of the four endings. But honestly, none of them are good endings for Captain Walker. This was one hell of a game. And I'm disappointed in myself for not playing it sooner. I say that as the majority of my backlog glares at me. If you like brutal video game violence, then it's easy to have fun with this one. Just don't say I didn't warn you when the game punches you in the gut with emotion at times. I'm being brutally honest here when I say it caught me off guard. I was really expecting another mindless shooter experience. 
but the people over at Jaeger Development did an amazing job here. As I said, the controls can be a tad clunky, and the story has some amazing points to make, but the graphics have that typical mid 6th gen look to them. It had average difficulty, though at times it became much harder, resulting in many game overs. This was both because of the way the game played out and my own stupid decisions. I played on the level above the lowest, what I assume was the normal difficulty. Overall, this game is a must play. It's a little harder to get your hands on it now, but there are still ways. I give Spec Ops The Line a solid 8.5 out of 10.